God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hi, and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and we'll be journeying across the canvas today. I'm going to take you to a new location. But first of all, I want to talk about the the um, painting uh, where we were on our last episode. La last episode, we were in the foothills of the Grand Tetons. And if you remember the painting from the last show, it was a little different. I think I had uh, the cabin up a little higher and not quite as much color. Um, I, you know, I went in in my home studio and I did a little rearranging with the composition. I wasn't real happy with the cabin where it was. I wanted to bring it down here. And then, of course, I wanted to echo all this marvelous light that we're seeing up here. I wanted to echo it down there. It makes it just pop in that corner right there. So this is the lost cabin in the foothills of the Tetons in Wyoming. And so now today, we're going to go north, travel north, and we're going to go into Yellowstone. And I remember as a kid when I was growing up in school, we learned a lot about Yellowstone Park and Old Faithful. And I was fascinated with Old Faithful. I was always, I always wanted to go there. Well, I finally made it. And it wasn't quite exactly what I thought it would be like, but it was enchanting. It really was. So I'm going to start painting, and then I'll tell you more about the journey as I'm painting. Thank you. First of all, though, I better get some colors mixed up here. I want to dive right into that luscious sky, get all those darks in before I put the lights on. Uh, we've got some really strong value changes in this. You have, you know, like a really dark value going through here and a, sort of a medium value here. And this is sort of a medium to a darker value. And then, of course, this is very light. It's almost like a four value um, uh, photograph that I'm working from. And of course, we don't want it to look like a photograph. We want it to look like a painting. But I want to dive into that sky. It's just, oh, it's so fascinating to me. I don't know if the camera picks it up or not, but there's actually pinks and purples in these clouds back here. And the camera may not be able to pick it up, but I'll bet you my brush does. So here we go. I'm just working with my regular palette that I usually uh, work with. I think I've even eliminated a few colors today. I added one new one. I, I added brown matter. I was dinking around in my home studio and I used, picked up a little bit of brown matter and used it. I wanted to try it, and I really liked it. And so I put a little bit on the palette today. We'll see if we can use it anywhere in there. I'm making a nice grayed blue. This is what takes the time, is mixing the paints. I wonder, can you hear the knife scratching against the palette? I can. I put out two globs of white. I thought I'd be on the safe side today. Instead of having all my white in one pile on my palette, I put out two globs because I thought, well, I want to keep one cleaner. Okay, now that looks a little too blue according to what I'm seeing here. I'm going to add just a wee bit of green to that. 
warm up that blue so that it's not so cold. And then, of course, the green being the complement of the violet in the clouds, that will make it even more dramatic and beautiful. Here we go. Oh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. I think we nailed it, kiddo. All right, here we go. And then we'll put some more darks. We need, we need to mix up a few more darks here. I want to have, um, you know, a lot of colors to, to prepared and ready to just dip into. So bear with me while I go through this process. I had always, always wanted to travel to Yellowstone. When we finally got there, we were actually on a trip from here in Wisconsin, where I live, all the way to the West Coast, to Washington State. And as a special treat, we stopped at Yellowstone on the way. And it was really um, the park. I don't know if you, you have been there. I know many of you have, but those of you that haven't, the park is very diverse. As you go through the park, you'll, you'll hit areas that are almost barren. And it's quite large. I think the park covers, goes into three different states. I think it's Idaho and Wyoming and another state. I'm not sure, can't think right now. But anyway, it, it's um, very large and you have your mountains and of course they're very wooded. And then you have these areas that are like plains that are flat and sage-like, almost like, um, like you would think more desert-like, more like high desert. The wildlife was, was quite abundant. We did get to see the big elk. Put a little more light on this. And I'm going to scrape that down. I don't like where that's going. So we'll just scrape that off. And we'll put, get a little bit of pink in there, a little bit of violet. This is what we want. Up there in that area, okay. Now we can start coming down with the dark. This, as it comes down, has to be quite um, a bit darker right in here so that we can see the, 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 the smoke from the volcano. I was listening to something on, I think it was PBS the other day about volca volcanoes. And it said that, believe it or not, that the biggest volca volcano we have in the United States is, is Old Faithful. And they don't really know when it's really ever going to, to really go off. That's really something. It's kind of, in a way, it's kind of a little scary. Let's get some blue in here. And I have some blue in here, and there's a little blue in there. 
This is a little darker down in here. It was very, when we saw the volcano, when we saw Old Faithful, um, can't say erupt, but blow, I guess you'd call it. Um, I had always been under the impression that it was like clockwork, you know. That I don't know where I heard that, but I was under the impression that every, you know, hour or every so many minutes that it went off like clockwork. Well, that's not the way it is. They put a sign up, and there's all these chairs that are sitting around quite a ways away. Um, and you, it'll tell you, like, you know, the next time it's going to blow, it will be, like, at 520 or something. That's what time it happened to be when we were there. And we waited for, oh, I guess almost until 6 o'clock. And then, and it was getting quite dark um, in the sky. I think there was a storm coming. And it finally went. And it starts out with little, little bubbles little tiny bubbles that kind of pop up. It's like something boiling on the stove, a pot of rice boiling on the stove. And it just pops and pops, and pretty soon it gets larger and larger, and the steam starts to roll out. And it, I think right now in this photograph that I have of it, I think it's at, it's about as high. It goes up, what do they say? The, well, the, the, the um, I, I believe the, the steam itself actually goes up to about 50 feet or further. It's not a good place to be too close to. As we, as we traveled to the park, through the park, we saw a lot of other areas that were really, I thought, were prettier than where Old Faithful was located. You know, where the, the lakes, and I think my favorite area was the Yellowstone Grand Canyon, or the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. I thought that was really beautiful. It's just like the Yellowstone, or it's just like the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, deep, deep canyon with a large waterfalls and smaller waterfalls and all these vantage points to see these places. I'm leaving this clean because I want that for my, um, for my white smoke or steam. I guess it's really steam, not smoke. I want this really light back here so that you can see the distance under here. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and do a little futzing with that later. Right now I'm just trying to lay in the, the colors that I see. There's this beautiful turquoise in the sky that I'm having a little trouble getting. 
but I'll get it. I'll just keep working it until I do. Yeah, right in here. There it is. And then we've got some clouds there. This appears to me to be need to be a little bit lighter. Once again, I'm working with these bristle brushes. I don't know, kids. I'm still not sold on them. They are just so scratchy. This is a lot of white in here. Okay. All right, now I think I'll go ahead and get the dark on. And for, for right now, I'm just going to mix up a really dark value. I'm not going to worry about any detail. We'll wait for the detail till we get closer to the, you know, till we get the whole canvas covered. So right now, we're, I'm just going to put this really dark, dark green, sort of, a, I'm making a black, sort of a green to put in that, those trees back there. And I'm going to push that up in order to have more of a, of a feeling of, of um, forest and trees. You know, a lot of times the, br the brush stroke will, will actually define the um, subject man matter better than anything else if you just paint it with the brush stroke go go going the right way. At least that's what I like to do. See, if I, I, I really don't have to fuss with this much. It already looks like trees and stuff. Okay. And then this over here. And that's far away, so we'll let that edge be real soft. And I soften up those edges in the in the uh, background just by taking and dragging the the sky over the edge, and that that softens it and makes it go back into the distance. It's not really that close, and then I can always come back in and if I want to and refine it just a little bit more, but. There, that looks a little better, looks a little further away. I really like soft edges in paint, in paintings, soft to go with the, you know, you have the hard edges and then you also have to have the, hard, the soft edges. So anyway, what's really interesting in this in this waiting for Old Faithful to blow is the different people that are sitting there. I happen to be sitting near a group that were wagering on when it was going to happen. And I guess this one person was quite adept at telling just when it was going to, they, they could tell by the amount of, of um, steam or bubbles or whatever. I didn't want to do that. See, that's the nice thing about painting in oil. You don't want to do it, you don't like it, just take it off. No problem, just take it off. I see that little bit of stuff over there. I'll go back and darken that a little bit, but Okay, now this is coming down here 
And then I'm going to go to a different brush and I'm going to paint the this ground area that I see. I see this light edge and then this needs to be kind of softened into that. It's kind of a light edge there that's coming and it comes up in here and then it goes down. This is this is almost like a, a shale. It's uh, sandy, um, rocky. I don't know quite how to express it. It's I'm not it's not the most attractive stuff in the world. Let me just tell you that. Um, but we'll see what we can do with paint to make it look attractive. Because like I said, we're, it isn't really about making this a look like the photograph. It's, this is supposed to be our, our impression of this. Okay. All right, now that light, sort of rocky, the only thing I can think of, the only word I can think of is shale. And that seems greater than that, Kitty. Let's see here. I'm working very hard trying to um, get the, the right colors in here for you. And here, and then up in here. Okay, but that is going across there. All right. Now here is a little darker. This is a little darker, and it's coming up here and kind of coming down. That's even darker yet. This is where it kind of sits in a... Um, the land sort of comes together in all different points here. That's another thing that makes this kind of an interesting thing to paint because you have all these directions going different different ways and it, and it helps to make it a little more more interesting here. This is a little darker right in here. Okay, and then, yeah, and this is darker coming down here. And then over in here we have a little bit of that brownish coming down. And then we have the white shale over here. And that's quite white coming in to here. And down here on the bottom, you have almost a, has a little tiny bit of a pinkish look in here where those, where it's first starting to come up. All right, let's see now. This right here, I better fix my paper towel here. There we go. Okay. Um. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Brings back some really good memories. Memories of, of relaxed times, you know, you just kind of get all caught up rushing through life and you forget what it, a vacation is like to just amble along and see the different things, marvel in their beauty, um, dream about being back in your studio so that you can paint them. And it's 
It's nice. Vacations are nice. Traveling is nice. Traveling on canvas is nice, like I do. All right, here. You've got all these little patches of lights, and I want to just kind of get that filled in. Some sandy colors, and you can already tell that this is going to be much, much brighter than what the photograph is, but that's okay. That's what paint's for. And there's some little darks in here, and you get a beautiful um, green color when you mix your Payne's gray with the yellow ochre. I want some red in here. And then this down in here, I'm seeing a little alizarin crimson. Now, I'm probably going to knock all this down a little bit, but just for now, I just want to have it, have it on there. Then I can tone it down and do what I want to do. I see a little group of green things in there. This looks a little green in here. Alrighty, and there's a little green right in, right in here, and and then we have some green coming over in here. And then there's more light. More light over in here. And some orange. I started to tell you about those painted. I think I, I can't remember if it was the, called the paint pots or just what, but it was this real strange, surreal area that was cordoned off, and you and you uh, walked around it. You couldn't go into it, and it was all these pools of, the, and they were bubbling. You know, just like like I was saying, like the rice kind of simmering and bubbling up and popping, and they were doing this, and, um, and but they were different colors. It was was um, very interesting, very um, I don't know. It was kind of like, if you can imagine, feeling like you're on another planet. That's the way it was. It was just so different. And the people, um, you know, most, most of the people that were walking around it, you could tell that they were really quite awestruck at this natural phenomenon that they were seeing. I heard on the news not too long ago that there was a really serious fire in Yellowstone, and I, I truly hope it didn't do too much damage. 
course we have a lot of fires now going on in the in the west okay I like that that's that's pretty I think at least I think it's pretty it's colorful I like that bring this down a little bit more make that come out just a little bit more and then I think we need I know you're waiting for me to get to the actual steam, huh? That great big bundle of steam. Uh, let's see here, that's lighter back there. We want this, it to stay lighter. I think I'll take the green and, oh no, it's a little more violet. There we go. There, that's what we wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to darken, before I go to my lightest lights, I think I'm going to darken this area over here on the bottom. There we go. And then there you can see just a little touch of that in, in there. And I'm going to take the, a uh, paper towel and soften that down a little bit so that it it doesn't pick up too much of the green. And now I'm going to start coming in here get back with that blue brush. First of all, I think I'll take, um, I think I'll work this a little bit and soften it a little. And just Kind of soften and move with the with the clouds. It just seems to help make it a little softer and and um, I don't have my big brush with me today, but there that looks a little better. I often do this, you know, because the sky is the furthest thing back. And so it should be a little softer, I think. You know, when you're thinking about distance, atmosphere, things like that, you consider all of that and, yeah, the sky should be back further and it should be softened a little bit. We don't want to make it look like it's really too stormy. There we go. Now we've got some nice things going in here, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we do have a little, a little bit of the blue up above, right up in here. In this little corner right up in here. And it's coming up there. And let's see, we're gonna have some areas of blue coming through in here. There's going to be an area right in here. And then this is gonna be coming around and this right here is going to be coming across over here. 
right there. That's all going to be white, the white. And this is going to have some blue coming around down in here. Okay, I'm trying to sort of come in from the outside in to create my, my steam. I think I need, you know, your, your eye bounces around. I think I need this to be just not that white, Kitty. Uh, I need this to be just a little bit lighter back here in the, on the skyline. Just a little bit lighter there. And then we'll kind of soften that in. And we'll have that same light over here and up in here. And we'll take this big brush and come down a little bit. I'll just keep that nice and soft. Okay, and then over here, I, I'm really seeing a lot of um, of uh, clouds back there, and they're warm. They're a nice warm white, where this is kind of cool. This is much warmer up here, so I'll take some white and warm it up with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. That works pretty well. Yeah, there we go. You can really see that that sun is, is hitting those clouds back there. So now we'll just have to pray that we don't make green when we put these yellow clouds on. Well, I think I'll take the safest road here and wipe some of this out. Okay, now let's see here. Now these are just kind of going across. seeing a lot of green here. I hope that's not... There we go. I want these to look like there are clouds in the background. Okay, we do have a little bit of blue right in there. Right in here there's a little touch of blue. And there's a little touch right up in there. And this is a little darker in here. And there's a little dark right down in there. Okay. All right. Now this is a violet over here. right in here, sort of a violet color. And that's from the steam. And it's a little violet on the edge right in here also as it's coming up here. This, is, this one's coming down here like this.
A little violet right in there. And there's a blue right here, blue violet. see here. It's my next biggest brush. I guess I'm just going to have to clean this one and stay with it. Try to wipe it, all the paint off of it that I can. This is turning into a bit of a challenge today, but that's okay. We're up to it, aren't we? Just hang in there. We'll make something happen here. There we go. All right. Okay. I kind of like the way this is sort of coming down and around. Sorry, I'm so quiet. I, I totally forgot. Forgot you were with me. I was so engrossed in this. My gosh. You know, it, it's just the, the process of painting, of journeying across your canvas, and you've got all these choices to make, and, and beautiful things to, to see and bring out that you forget. You forget you're not by yourself. You forget to talk, you forget to think. Sometimes I even forget to breathe when I'm painting. I love it so much. Down here now, this works down here. I, isn't it exciting? You know, you just to see this, this tremendous thing that's been around for who knows how many thousands, maybe millions of years, and you're here you are in this TV studio capturing it on canvas. It's, it's like a miracle, kind of. It's wild and free. Dangerous, but beautiful.
And I want to try, there was like little bubbles coming up that kept coming up and popping. And I want to try to show you those, you know, try to show you that, that feeling of, of those little things. I don't see them in the photograph, but I know they were there. I saw them. I was there. I saw them. Here we have little light things going. There. There. This is, this is lighter coming up right here. And we have some light coming onto this too. And the warmest part of it, the very warmest part is, I'm getting so excited now because it's coming together. It's wild. It's wild and it's rough and I know it's rough, but I can see it happening now. We need light right in here. I love to paint with thick, juicy paint. This is, this is what is called impasto, thick, juicy paint. And you just let that paint build up on there and let it describe, let the movement and the thickness of the paint describe the surface of what you're seeing. This is warmer right along this edge right in here. I do want to take the another brush and bring back some of the blues in here. And we have a little bit of the green that's right in here showing. It has to be a little darker there. And then that we may have to wait because if I touch that now, Maybe if I do it with my paper towel, touch it and knock it down a little bit. You see, you can paint with your fingers, with paper towels, with brushes, knives, spatulas, whatever you want to paint with. There, that knock that down to show that that is behind. And we'll put, put a little more on top of it there to kind of there, now that, that shows that that is that mountain coming from behind. And I just, oh, I, I want this to just, right in here, I want it to just really come down. Right in there. <laughs> Looks kind of Van Gogh-ish, doesn't it? Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. 
I like it. I hope you like it too. I hope, <laughs> after sitting here and sitting there and watching me try to make this come to pass here, I, I, as we traveled across this canvas, I, I hope you do like it. I think I like it pretty good. I think I'll go back in here and maybe make a little more of the green right in here and a little more of the light. And that seems to be, there again, that's that rocky sort of stuff that I was telling you about. You know, the, the terrain just keeps changing from enormous rocks and cliffs and waterfalls to mountains to rivers and streams. Beautiful, I saw the most beautiful elk. Of course, I only saw him from the back. I have this great picture of this elk come in the, from the back of him as he's walking away right in the middle of this stream. It's just, what an experience it was. I hope if you haven't been there that someday you'll get to go. I really do. Put a little green down here, a little bit right in here. And maybe some up in here, right there. And I think I should do something here to show more where the where this is here. I think this needs to be a little crisper. Right there. And coming down. And then right here. There we go. That helps. We need those. We need those little signposts that lead the eye into where the the um, important part is. A little more white right in there. And let me see here. I see a dark green coming right here. And then the last thing I want to do here is darken up the bottom of this and make it look like it's coming out of that area there. And I think even though I don't see it in the photograph, it might help if I come with a little bit of dark right underneath to kind of show that that is coming out of there. I think that helps a little bit. I think this needs to be just a little darker right in here for the background there. I truly hope that you've enjoyed our little journey through Yellowstone and to see Old Faithful at its finest as it is blowing. And I hope that you'll join us for our next show when I think, I think we'll continue west and go to Sedona. Sedona, Arizona. That's a really beautiful place too. The, the red rocks of Sedona. I think you'll like that. So you'll have to be sure and catch us next time as we go to Sedona, Arizona. And of course you'll want to see whatever little things I come up with to change and make this painting here. 
a little bit, you know, more refined than that I'll do in the studio. I want some light right in here. Okay, my cameraman is telling me I have one minute. One minute, where is our time gone? Where has it gone? I don't know, but I sure have enjoyed being with you today. I, and I hope that you enjoyed our painting journey to Old Faithful in Yellowstone Park. Once again, my name is Kitty Lynn Klish. You've been watching Painting Journeys. Be sure and catch us next time. Bye-bye, till then.